Hello everyone, welcome to Fasura Psych, and if you're watching this video on the day of its upload, then happy Halloween. Today's topic is going to be whether or not mental disorders or personality disorders have any relation or correlation to Myers-Briggs types. And the answer is no, but also yes. It's very complicated, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get into it. Just to preface, because we're going to be talking about mental health disorders and clinical disorders in this video, I want to say that I am not a licensed clinical psychologist at the time of uploading this video, and you should not take anything in this video as clinical advice. All right. So do Myers-Briggs types lead to mental health disorders, or do mental health disorders lead to certain Myers-Briggs types? And the answer overall is no, and the reason for this is because the Myers-Briggs type indicator and the 16 types assumes that you are coming from a healthy and normal mind in the terms that you don't have any mental disorders or anything of that nature. So when you take the test, the test assumes that you do not already have some sort of disorder. So if you were to have a disorder and take the test, it might influence your outcome. And that's really where the relation between these two things comes from. In that if you are a certain type, you're more likely to have a specific kind of disorder because of the type you are, than more so the type is going to cause the illness in, in and of itself. So let's think about that. If we think of a personality disorder such as borderline personality disorder, which is described by the kind of switching of personality traits, it's almost like bipolar, where one is going to be along the lines of having high episodes of mania and depression switching between the two. Uh, they're also going to have troubles with relationships and keeping relationships because they have switching emotions. This is going to be a personality disorder that's going to be far more related to the ENFP personality types or NFPs overall, because introverted feeling and extroverted intuition are going to align much more so with this type of behavior. But we can also look at some of the other personality disorders such as schizoid or schizotypal. And schizotypal personality disorder as well as schizoid are characterized by extreme introversion and lack of emotional expression. Now these personality disorders would be far more related to types such as the INTJ or the INTP. And these types might even get falsely diagnosed with schizoid or schizotypal personality disorder in their youth because of their extreme preference for introversion. And you'll notice that people who are far more introverted are going to be far more likely to be diagnosed with something along the lines of schizoid or schizotypal. Because we look at everything that is a personality trait, something that can be measured in terms of what's the standard healthy range for it. So when we look at introversion above, say, the 98th percentile or someone who's extremely introverted, we would almost consider that something along the lines of being unhealthy. We would almost, in fact, we do. That's why we have things such as schizotypal and schizoid personality disorder. These personality disorders are characterized by extreme introversion to the point where it uh, messes with one's life and one's well-being. So it's important to note that when we talk about personality disorders, we're not talking about mental disorders, like a complete mental disorder such as schizophrenia. When I say schizoid and schizotypal, I am not referring to schizophrenia because they are two separate things. A personality disorder is something that is both genetic and developed and is typically long-lasting and not something that you typically can completely medicate or get over. It's more like something that's a part of you and that you have to learn to deal with or get past. So when we look at personality disorders, there are three distinct clusters that have different attributes that characterize the different clusters. So schizoid, schizotypal, and paranoid are part of cluster A. And cluster A is are characterized by avoidance, extreme introversion, and a detachment from reality, but not to the point where the person is considered crazy or psychotic in the terms that they've lost complete touch with reality. So when we look at something like schizotypal, which is defined by an extreme preference for an internal fantasy world alongside introversion, that's something that I would say correlates strongly with the INJ personality types because they lead with intuition, and intuition that has the least attachment to the world of sensation. And that's why the introverted intuitive types are more likely to test as schizotypal in my opinion, whereas the schizoid, the extreme introvert, would most likely be INTPs or INTJs. You're not likely going to see a schizoid INFJ because an INFJ with extroverted feeling is more so likely going to have that base level of communication with others. Now, schizoid would be the most introverted of all the personality or personality disorders, excuse me, because it's characterized by that extreme introversion. That would be above the 90th percentile int introversion to the point where it's messing with one's uh, well-being or health. Lastly, we have paranoid personality disorder. And because paranoid personality disorder is described by a 
almost psychotic level of detachment from reality, I would not characterize it or correlate it with any personality type. Because paranoid personality disorder is typically something that leads up to a complete mental disorder such as schizophrenia. It's not uncommon for someone to be diagnosed with paranoia only to later have schizophrenia later on in their life when they receive a full diagnosis or their issue develops into a full-blown mental disorder later on. So next is cluster B of personality disorders. And cluster B is more so defined by the inability to regulate emotions correctly as well as antisocial behavior. In fact, the first personality disorder of cluster B is antisocial personality disorder. Now, antisocial personality disorder is a hard one to correlate with type, and I don't think it correlates very well with personality type because there's a lot of different ways that one can be diagnosed as an antisocial individual. It is known that antisocial personality is far more predominant in males because of the types of behavior associated with antisocial personality disorder, but I don't feel strong enough relating it or correlating it with any personality type to make a decision on that one. So after that, we would have borderline personality disorder. And as discussed earlier, um, borderline personality disorder is the inability to regulate emotions correctly, and they also have troubles holding down relationships, family, friends, things of that nature. So people with this personality disorder are far more likely to be the types who lead with extroverted intuition and therefore have repressed introverted sensing and struggle with the ability to kind of hold down or maintain what they have because they seek that evolution, that next level of change. They're constantly wanting to change the current situation that they're in. After that is histrionic personality disorder. Now this is one that you almost never hear about because it's typically uh, misrepresented or misthought of as narcissistic personality disorder. But histrionic personality disorder is an extreme need for attention, but not having the same escalated level of self that you would find within someone who is narcissistic. Now, they, someone could probably be both of these things or have traits from both of these personality disorders, but this one is far more defined by that extreme need for attention compared to the grandiose level uh, or grandiose representation of the self. So, this disorder is going to be associated most likely with extroverted sensing dominant types. That would be my guess. ESFPs and ESTPs are probably going to be the types that more so seek attention because they're engaging in that immediate world. That said, ENTPs might also fall into this category as well. So lastly, in cluster B, we have narcissistic personality disorder, which is characterized by an extreme self-sense of importance. People with narcissistic personality disorder believe that they're great, that they are kind of God to give to the world and things of that nature. Now, you hear the term narcissist thrown around a lot. People throw it around whenever they meet someone that they typically just don't agree with or they think is kind of selfish. Someone who's kind of selfish isn't necessarily a narcissist. A narcissist is someone who has this extreme level of self-importance and extreme level of selfishness. Again, to that point where it's probably above the 95th or 98th percentile, where they're extremely self-focused. Now, I don't think that this particular personality disorder is correlated with any personality type. I think that anybody of any type could have this personality disorder. And it's because I think that this specific personality disorder is more so of a genetic biological disorder than it is a personality or trait-based one. So the last cluster of personality disorders is cluster C. And cluster C is characterized by anxiety and compulsion in that the emotions of people with the disorders in this cluster tend to cause them to act in a way that they wouldn't typically act if they didn't have this disorder. So for example, we have avoidant, um, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorders. Now these three are so similar in nature in that they're characterized by anxiety and a level of compulsion due to that anxiety that I'm going to kind of group them as one. And I think that the NFPs are definitely the types who are going to be the most likely to have these personality disorders or the cluster C of personality disorders, ENFPs and INFPs. Specifically, these personality types, because of their intro introverted feeling with extroverted intuition, they tend to have strong levels of emotions and they tend to feel things strongly. So when they have levels of anxiety or they have anxiety in general, those levels are going to be typically higher than what the average person might feel. And you will note that in the Myers-Briggs statistical manual that the INFPs and the ENFPs have the highest levels of things like depression and even rates of suicide and that's because these personality types tend to feel things very strongly and that's what leads them to have these higher escalated levels of emotions. So that's all the personality disorders. Now you'll note that I'm not going into full-on mental disorders. One, because I don't believe I have the clinical training to make assumptions about 
clinical disorders such as schizophrenia and things of that nature. And two, I don't believe that they correlate very well with personality and that I believe that they tend to be far more biological or even genetic and that they are typically due to some sort of malfunction in the brain or in cognition, which is not something that is seen with personality disorders, which tend to more so be just escalated levels or low levels of something. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the personality types and the relation and correlation to personality and mental disorders. This has been Asura at Asura Psych. I would like to remind you that I do have personality typing sessions available on my website, asurapsych.com. Have a good one.